Hello everyone, today I want to take a look at something that's been requested a few times on the channel, which is a single uh, login session limit for your device users. So let's say you have an application like this where you can visit a blog, create new posts, uh, and as you're doing this, if at any point you log in with another user account, so we'll come over to localhost port 3000 here, if we log in with this account, uh, and let's say I'm trying to create a new post here, and I click log in, if I'm in here and I'm like, hello world, it's me, uh, but I, I sign in in another browser, it then logs me out and redirects me. This is actually very easy to set up with this gem uh, and it just automatically gives you a 401 and redirects you to your login page when you try and do this. All we really need are two gems. One's gonna be device, of course, and the other one's going to be this device security gem here. The uh, device security gem gives you a whole bunch of different options in addition to the session limitable. And I just wanna cover these real quick uh, in case it's something else you might also be interested in. So you have the ability to set that the passwords expire. If you've used, uh, there's a couple different like pieces of software that companies use where it's like your employee billing portal or for like your taxes or anything like that. Uh, maybe you've used something like Paylocity which might be triggering a few people. Uh, one thing that they do is they'll have a password that expires after a set amount of time, let's say once every three months. And then they'll also have a, uh, which one is it? It's one of these, uh, which also allows you, right here, prevent the current uh, expired password from being reused. But with Paylocity specifically, I think the way it works is you have like four uh, password freezes where you can't use the last four passwords for your current password or something like that. Uh, so this also gives you that functionality and this is configurable in your initializer. So if you do have something that requires that type of uh, security, this is a great way to implement it. That said, as an end user, what usually ends up happening uh, is you, let's, I'm just gonna bring over my, my notes real quick. Uh, you have something like this where you implement that feature. Someone has a uh, password, uh, their first password is uh, something like Hunter123. You then tell them they have to change it. So you say Hunter1234. You then tell them they have to change it again. They still can't use their old password, so they end up doing 12345. Then you still say that. Hunter 123456. Uh, and then you get to the fifth password. And what do those people do? Well, they just say Hunter 123 again. Similarly, if you tell them they need to use like a capital H, uh, they'll just change it from Hunter 123 to Hunter 123. If you tell them they need a symbol, they'll almost definitely do this. Uh, so just be aware that this is good in theory, but in practice, it, people are a hard problem to solve. You're probably not going to solve them. Uh, so just be aware of that. So you can implement these things, just don't expect people to actually follow them. Uh, you also have the ability to have different methods for uh, validating your, your user accounts with like a, uh, a code that gets emailed to your users. You have the ability to archive passwords. Uh, the session limitable is the one we're gonna be using for saying you can only log in in one browser or log into an account once at a time. You can expire an account, you can expire their passwords, you can have security questions that'll work for like CAPTCHA fallback. Uh, and then this is the verification code. So in our case, we're gonna be using the session limitable. So let's take a look at how to do this. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails new video. So let's go ahead and let's do a bundle add for device. That'll add the device gem to our gem file and run a bundle install command for us. We can then go ahead and run a Rails G device colon install command to add device to our application. We'll then do a Rails G device user command to create our user model. Next, let's do a Rails G controller pages home. Create, a, create ourselves a home page. And then let's do a Rails G scaffold post with a title and a body of type text, just so we have something to test with. Okay, so now we have those set up. Let's go ahead and let's add in our uh, device security gem. We can scroll down here, find the device security gem section. We'll go ahead and run a bundle add uh, for device dash security. Go ahead and run that. Next, we can grab this Rails G device underscore security colon install command. Go ahead and run that in our terminal. 
that will generate our localizations as well as the initializer. We'll pop into the initializer real quick. I'm not going to cover it all, uh, but it's good to point out. This is where you can configure stuff such as how many old passwords a user is allowed to use, whether or not they're allowed to use old passwords, uh, and whether you just want to outright deny old passwords, etc. You have the ability to archive the passwords. Uh, you have the ability to set the password complexity where you can say they need to use digits, so lowercase symbols, uppercase, uh, and you can say how many they need to use of each. Uh, just remember, the more friction you add here, the more you're going to be affecting your uh, like churn or your, your sign up funnel. So let's say you have a checkout page and they need to log in, like create an account to purchase whatever you're selling them. Uh, the more you make this a difficult step with all of this security, the more likely you are to lose them as customers. That's why a lot of people are discovering uh, every day that like Google sign in forms or GitHub sign in forms where you can click continue with Google or whatever, uh, that gets you a really high rate of registration because it's really easy and frictionless. Uh, that said, don't, you know, don't allow users to create a password that is just the word password. So these are good to have. It's just remember, the more you do this, the more you affect it. So you're going to want to find that balance between security for your users uh, and being able to pay the bills at the end of the month. There's a bunch of other stuff in here that I recommend checking out, uh, including how long the expiration is for like the uh, account expiration, as well as your CAPTCHA stuff uh, where you can require it. But okay, we're done with that. Let's go ahead and let's do uh, the next step. We have this generated. The last thing we have to do is a Rails G migration. Uh, we need to create a, I think it's like a unique uh, session ID. Uh, we'll say add unique session ID to users. And it's going to be unique underscore session underscore ID colon string. I believe that's what I called it. Uh, let me just check real quick. Unique session. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a, uh, oops, not a bundle, a Rails DB colon migrate command. And then we'll go ahead and run a Rails S to start our server. We'll come over here to localhost port 3000 and we'll see that's working. So let's come into our config and our routes.rb. Let's change the git to a root, the pages uh, controller home action. Make sure that's a hash. We can refresh that takes us to our home page. Let's come into our models and our user.rb. Inside of our user.rb, we have to add the uh, uh, comma and then the session limitable. That's gonna give us that uh, sign in option for unique sessions. Final steps are you can optionally come into your post controller, say before action, authenticate user. Uh, so if they go to the post uh, link, they won't be able to log in or whatever, or they'll be forced to log in if they aren't already. And then we'll come to our pages and our homepage. And in our homepage real quick, we'll create, uh, we'll just do something like this. We'll grab a, if we are already logged in, uh, we want to say, hello, here's your email. So you know you're logged in and then we'll link a sign out button. And because we're using Rails 7, we have to add this data turbo underscore method colon colon delete. Uh, so that turbo knows this is a uh, log out button. Uh, otherwise this won't work. Now for if we're not already logged in, we just want to show them a sign in and sign up uh, page. And then finally down here, we'll do a BR and then we'll do a link to the blog, uh, which is just our post path. We'll go ahead and save this, come over here and refresh. Uh, we'll click sign up. I'll say Dean at example.com. And just to drive the point home, I'll paste in my email here. Uh, that way I satisfy the symbol requirement. Uh, of course, that's completely asinine, but you get the idea. Users are the worst and they're impossible to deal with. Let's go ahead and let's hit control shift N to open up an incognito tab. Come over to localhost port 3000, click sign in. I'll go over to the blog here and do a test case. Uh, and then we'll try to log in as this user. We can see in our console here that when we did that, we update the users to set the unique session ID where the user ID is equal to one to be this uh, unique session ID equals this, whatever this is. This is coming from your device security session limitable. So that's really neat. Tells you in the terminal what it's doing. Uh, and now if I come over here and click create post, it actually already logged me out. And if I open my terminal, I should see a 401 right here. 401 uh, unauthorized uh, because the session ID was a mismatch. Again, tells you exactly what, what caused it. And it says your session ID was a mismatch. We expected this unique session ID, but we got this one because the session ID is the old one. This is the expected one, which is the current one that we just put into our database. Uh, but the old one right here is the one that we originally put in when the user signed in, which is this one right here. This NY whatever is going to be the, uh, the actual one for this. So if we come back down here, our actual one is the NYJ. So yeah, that's all you have to do there is that very quick setup. 
So hopefully this was informative and helpful, and hopefully you see uh, a couple other things with the device security gem that are worth trying out. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.